Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this session, we'll deep dive into the text widget. So without wasting time, let's get started. Text is a predefined widget in the Flutter that displays a string that is a text message on the screen using a single style. Text class is basically inherited from the stateless widget class and it has two different constructors. The first one is this one. We call this one as a parameters constructor or you may say it's a default constructor. And the next one is text.reach. So in this session, I'm limiting myself to explain only this first constructor. We'll talk about this text.reach in the next session. Let me erase this comment from here. You can see I have written a simple Flutter code in this page. So this is what the import statement. We have defined main function. Main is calling a run app. Inside this run app, I'm passing the object of my app. So this is what the my app class we have defined here. In this my app class, I'm simply returning the metal lab inside the build method. And for this metal app, we have passed the home as a scaffold. And now for this scaffold, let me define the body. Inside this body means for this body, I'm passing the widget as a center. Center has a property called child. And as a child of the center widget, I'm passing the text that we'll understand in this specific session. So for this text, I'm passing a first parameter. And I already copied some text for you guys. So let me paste it here. Let me add the extra comma at the end and let me format the code. And let me just make it proper for you guys. That's it. Now when I save, you can see the changes on screen. For this text constructor, the first parameter that we pass is always in the form of string, which represents the data that is to be presented on the screen. This particular type of parameter is actually a positional parameter and it is the compulsory for us. And all the remaining parameters are actually the optional named parameter. So let me focus on the remaining parameters as well. So let's start from the text scale factor. Text scale factor requires the value in the form of double. Let's say I'm passing two here. Now basically the text scale factor gives magnified version of your text. That is, we can say the text scale factor gives the number of font pixel for each logical pixel on the screen. Let's say in this case, I'm passing two. Let me save here and you can see the changes on screen. The value two for this text scale factor indicates my text will appear twice the bigger than the original one. Make sure that the text scale factor and the size that we pass for the font that totally different. We have the property called text align. Basically, text align allows us how the text has to be aligned, whether in the left, center, right, or justified. In order to specify the values for text align, we have got enum called text align. So we have got the properties called text align dot left, or you can see the values are like center, then left, right, and so on. Let's say I will use the left. Left is the by default. When I save, you can see my text is aligned in the left side. If I use the right here, so my text will be aligned at the right hand side. And when I use center, you can see my text is aligned in the center. And when we use the option called justify, our text will be justified. We have a property called text direction. Basically, this text direction specifies the direction in which the text has to be presented. For example, uh, for the language like English, we have the text direction from the left to right. Whereas in case of Urdu, we have the text direction from the right to left. The value for this text direction are actually specified by using the enum called text direction. So let me use this text direction enum that is the text direction. And I will use here LTR. LTR indicates left to right. So if I see, you can see by default this text has this left to right as the text direction. Now when I use the property called RTL, it means this specific text will have the direction from right to left. When I save it, you can see the changes here. My text is now completely justified. But as it is having the direction called RTL, that is the right to left, you can see the changes over the screen. Make sure that the direction and alignment both are the different things. Let me erase this code to understand the further properties. We have the option called max line. Max line actually requires the integer value, which specifies the maximum number of lines the text can be presented. Let's say I'm writing two here. So two here indicates there are maximum two lines in the text. So when we use this max line property too, it is hard to understand whether this text exactly has a two line or it has much more text to display. To solve this problem, Flutter has given an option called overflow. Overflow is actually managed using the enum called text overflow. So we have this text overflow here. So let me use overflow. 
basically using overflow we can manage the way in which overflow of text is presented on the screen let's say if i use the option called ellipse here then at the end of this last word you can see the three dots which indicate there is something more in the text then we have the property called clip the clip indicates your specific text will be clipped that is it will be cut we have again this option called fade fade means you will see the little fade on the specific string i don't know you guys might have observed it or not let me comment out this one and let me run it again so if i comment you can see there is no fade at the end of the specific last line but if i uncomment this line and if i save the code you can observe here there is a little fade occurring at the end of this last line let me delete this two line again so we have another property called soft wrapped the property soft wrapped allows us to specify whether the text should be breaked at the soft lines or not for example you can see if i use the option false here instead of showing the text in multiple lines this text is basically shown with the single line only now in this case in order to manage the overflow we can use the property called overflow that's what we have seen right now by default the value for this specific soft wrap is true that's why this specific text will be wrapped in the next line when there is no space available at the right side now let me move towards very important property called style for this first of all let me erase the code here inside and i'm passing a simple text let's say i will write a flatter teacher then let me use the property called style here so i'm writing style here and this property called style actually requires the object of text style here so we have to write the object of text style here this text style has a bunch of properties to decorate your text let's start from the first property called font size so let me use here font size say 30 let's save the code and look at the changes font size requires the value in the form of double using this we can control how big or small the text should appear on the screen we have the property called font family using this property we can specify the font for the text let's say i'm writing arial here so this specific text will appear with the font called arial i can change the font to let's say times save it and you can see the change even i can change it to courier How to use the custom font by configuring in the popspec.yaml file. I will explain that one in the upcoming session. We have the property called color. Using this property, we can specify the foreground color of the text. In Flutter, there are so many ways using which we can create a color object. In this session, I will go with the predefined color objects. For example, we have the class called colors here. And inside this class, we have the cons written in red, which indicates the red color. So if I save here, you can see this specific text will appear with the red color. If you want another color, you can change it to blue, save it and you can get the blue color. Using the property called background color, we can specify the background color for the text. So we can pass the color like let's say the color dot, let's say red here. So in this case, the specific text will have the red as a background color. Let me erase these three properties to understand the further properties. We have the property called font weight. Using font weight, we can control the thickness of the specific text. So the font weight is actually managed by using the class called font weight. So we have the class called font weight here. And the font weight can be passed by using the specific values like the font weight dot W100, W200 and so on. Or basically, if you want bolder font, simply you can use the bold. And if you don't want the bold text, simply you can use the normal here. So in this case, I'm using bold. Let's save and you can see this text will appear with the bold font face. We have the property called letter spacing. Letter spacing indicates the spacing between the letters. So it actually takes a double value. Let's say I'm passing 2.5. It means all the letters in this text will have the gap of 2.5 pixel. We have the property called word spacing. Word spacing again requires the property in the form of double value. Let's say if I'm passing 10 here, it means each word of the text will have the spacing of 10 pixel. If I save, you can see there's a gap of 10 pixel. If I change it to 50, then this display, then the words will have the gap of 50 pixels. Now again, let me delete these properties and let me format a code. Now we have the property called font style. Using this font style property, we can display the font using the normal style or italic. Let me use this one using the font style. So we have the enum called font style. So if I use font style or italic, it means 
the specific text will appear in the italic style and if I use the normal then in this case we have the normal text appearance. Let me use it again. We have the property called decoration. Basically decoration value is specified by using the object called text decoration. So let me write here object of text decoration. So inside this text decoration there are so many constant available. So we can use text decoration dot underline overline line through. Let me use the property called underline. When I use the property underline there is the underline below this text. I can change it to the option called overline. It means there will be a line above the text and if I use the option called line through then there will be line through the text. It's also possible to apply the specific color for the decoration. For this we can use the option called decoration color and let me write here the colors dot red. You can see this specific line that we have line through will appear with the red color. We can even control the thickness of this decoration line. For this we can use the option called decoration thickness. Let's say if I'm passing 5 here it means this specific line will have the thickness of 5 pixel. First of all let me decrease this decoration thickness to 2 pixel and it's possible to manage the decoration style. For this we have the option called decoration style. Decoration style value is specified using the enum called decoration style. Then let me write, let me pass here the decoration style. So I can write here decoration style. And let's say if I'm writing the value of decoration style as a double, so there will be two lines appear on the decoration. Then if I use the value called decoration style dot dash, then there will be dash line here. And if I use decoration style dot dotted, then there will be the dotted line appears as a decoration. We have the property called wave. The wave specifies the line will appear in the form of wave. Let me delete this property. We have the property called overflow. This overflow property is similar to the property that we have seen inside this text constructor directly. So this overflow is managed using the object of overflow. That's what we have seen right now. So I'm not going to waste time for explaining this again. Now I'm moving towards a very interesting property called shadows. Shadows allows us to display the shadow for the given text. The shadow property requires the shadows in the form of list. It means it's possible for us to apply multiple shadows for the single text. We have the object called shadow here. So let me write the object called shadow. Shadow class has three important properties. Let's say the first one is color. So let me specify the color here. So I can write here colors dot red. It means I want the shadow in the form of red color. The next property is offset. Offset basically indicates the displacement of shadow. Okay, I will explain that one in a moment. So let me pass here offset as let's say the 5 and I will pass the dx that is the displacement in the y axis is 10 and the last property is a blur radius. Let's say I am passing blur radius as 5. Blur radius indicates the amount to which shadow should spread. So I guess you guys might understand what is this color red and what is the meaning of this blur radius 5 and you might be waiting for explaining me what is this offset indicates. Offset basically specifies the displacement of shadow. First property requires the dx that is the displacement in the x direction. Let's say I am passing 20 here and the 10 specifies that is second value specifies displacement in the y direction. It is basically called the dy. Let me save it. You can see some changes over the screen and let me explain it in the form of the coordinate system. You might have seen the coordinate system in the mathematics. So this is what the coordinate system I am explaining here. So this specific axis is called the y axis and this axis is usually known as the y axis. Now the value here I have specified 20 is actually the displacement in x axis means this shadow will have a displacement of 20 pixel in the x direction. That's why this is having this distance 20 pixel from the specific text and the second value 10 is actually having the meaning for displacement in y direction. That is this specific shadow has a distance of this specific distance that is this, this distance is actually of 10 pixel. So I hope it's clear for you guys. Let me explain it again. This specific distance of shadow that is the distance from this particular point to the this point. This particular distance is actually 20 pixel in the x direction you can see. And the displacement of y direction that is a displacement with respect to y direction is 10. It means from this specific point to this point of shadow this specific distance is a 10 pixel in the y direction. It's possible to apply multiple shadows for the single text. 
So let me apply the first shadow. So for this, I will use the red color and I will pass the value of x, let's say 10 here. And I'm passing the value of y as let's say the minus 10. You can see this is the first shadow which is showing at the top side. Let me copy this code of shadow. And for the first shadow, let me write the comment and I will specify the one so that it will help me to understand this is the first shadow. Let me hit two here. So for the second shadow, I'm passing the color, let's say the blue here. And for this x coordinate, I'm passing the value minus 10. And for this y, let me pass the value 10. Let me save it here. And you can see this specific text has now two shadow. One is shown with the red color and another using the blue color. We have the property called foreground. Make sure that the property foreground and foreground color cannot be used simultaneously. Either we have to use foreground color or the foreground property. For the foreground property, we must have to pass the object of paint here. So as a beginner, I guess it might be quite difficult for you guys, but try to understand. So I'm passing the object of paint. For this specific paint object, I'm passing the color value as say, let's say the colors dot blue here. Then another property that I want is a stroke width. So I will go with an option called stroke width here. Let's say I will use the value of stroke width as a two pixel. Then let me pass another value again. So let me pass the value, let's say the style here. The style has to be passed in the form of painting style. So let me write here painting style. So I will write here painting style. So I will write here painting style dot stroke. Now, as we are using the const here in the constructor, it is showing the error. So if I remove the const from here, so error will disappear. Let me save here and you can see the changes on my screen. Let me increase the font size a little bit to understand this in a better way. It's looking quite better. Similar to foreground, we have the property called background. Make sure that the property background and background color both are different. We can either use the background or background color, but not the both. For the background also, we have to pass the object of paint here. You can see I have passed the object of paint. On the same object, I'm specifying the color as blue, stroke width of two and the style with the stroke. So if I save here, you can see for this specific text, there is a specific border appeared with a two pixel stroke having the color blue. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really like the way I am explaining the concept, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get the latest videos.